did talk to uh, uh, the gentleman, and um, I'm supposed to hear from him this week to find out exactly when, where we can start taking this wall down. But I suspect that it'll be there. We'll we'll be able to start maybe the last week in October doing some planning, and in the first week in October we'll start working on knocking this wall down. The first week of November, thanks. But there's things to think about. New carpet, color of carpeting. You know, <laughs> you know, churches have split over the color of carpeting. That's not going to happen here. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Will not be picked. That I guarantee. You. Okay, let's stop now. All right. Lord Almighty, let's, let's pray. Yes. Father Almighty, we thank you this morning. Father, as, you, yes, as we Lord, see what's going to happen to our church, Lord. as we see how we're about to explode for you, Father, explode in spirit, explode in love, explode in science, explode in size, explode in people. Father, we are prepared, Almighty God, to, to be obedient to your word, to be servants to you. And Father, how we do that is by our offerings. And we thank you, Father, for all the offerings that you provide. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to preach today is of divine appointment. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that God has a word for His church, and it's a right now word. Yeah. Somebody say right now. Yeah, right now. I believe God is speaking to His people. If we would only open our ears to listen, yeah. we'll hear what God is saying to the churches. He that has an ear, let him hear. And God is speaking through His Word. He speaks through the Holy Spirit. He speaks through His men and women of God to proclaim a message of truth. How many wants a message of truth today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, we'll put it on the screen. I'm going to read from the book of Numbers, chapter 10, the first five verses. That is Numbers, chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, Now the Lord said to Moses, He said, Make two trumpets of hammered silver for calling the community to assemble and for signaling the breaking of camp. He said, When both trumpets are blown, everyone must gather before you at the entrance of the tabernacle. But if only one trumpet is blown, then only the leaders, the head of the clans of Israel, must present themselves to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many wants to hear his word this morning? Amen. Let us pray. Bow your heads. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray this morning, God. I pray, God, that you anoint me with the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that you break the bondages of Satan upon your people. I pray this morning, God, that everybody leaves this place ready to meet you. I pray this morning, God, God, that you use this lips of clay this morning. I pray, God, that God, you, that you move in such a miraculous way, God. God, we pray that somebody gets their heart right. We pray that somebody turns back to the foot of the cross. We pray this morning, God, let us sound the alarm. Let us blow the trumpet loud. Let us stand in the gap for those that are in need today, God. Father, as you spoke to Moses, God, speak to your people today. Let the word of God come forth, empowered authority this morning, God. Father, as we are getting ready to meet you, today could be the day. Today could be the day. I said, church, today could be the day. God, make us ready. Let us be ready. Let us uh, assemble ourselves here this morning and 
shape ourselves and get ready. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say, in Jesus' name I pray. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. My message title this morning is The Trumpet Blast. Now I'm preaching this morning my ninth message from the book of Numbers as we continue our study on the tabernacle in the wilderness. We find here in the book of Numbers that God is preparing His people to get ready for the promised land. He's directing their every step. He's showing them how to live, how to worship, how to sacrifice unto Him. He's directing them with His presence, uh, and He's getting them in shape for the journey. How many knows we're on a journey? Yes, Amen. Are. And how many knows our destination is heaven? Come on. Yes. Now, chapter 10 here gives us the directions concerning the public notices that were given to the people on several different occasions by the sounding of the trumpet. In searching the scriptures, I find that many different instruments are used in, in the Bible, but the trumpet is the one that stands out most prominent uh, amidst all of them. Because trumpets have a clear and pure sound which somehow seems to be clearer and louder than any other instrument. We find this, that if the louder the trumpet blows, the clearer the sound of the trumpet. Come on. Hallelujah. I played a trumpet when I was in fifth grade, and I know just a little bit. The louder you blow that trumpet, the farther away somebody can hear that trumpet. And the louder that you blow that trumpet, the clearer and more pure the sound becomes because that's the way God designed the trumpet. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now the trumpet has a register in the brass family that is used for a signaling the device. And it can be heard over long distances. Come on. Now, I find that trumpet players often are used among heavenly guarded members of the troop. I was reading a story that they guarded the trumpet players because they are the ones they use to signal the troops. They're the ones that, that they relied upon for the instructions for the armies. Relied to make sure that everybody was in their proper place, in their proper step, and they were ready for battle. Could somebody say amen? amen. Now the Bible has a lot to say about trumpets which is a symbol of significant importance that I want to preach about this morning. Now, trumpets were used to assemble the people. Everybody say assemble. assemble. How many of us we assemble ourselves here today? Praise God. Trumpets are used to awaken the sleep. Come on. Now, Brother Bob, Brother, brother Bob, you was in the military. Did you ever hear a trumpet blow? Oh, yes. Huh? Every, every day. Brother Rich, you ever hear a trumpet blow? Every Come on. Day. Every day. Every day. Huh? Every we day. find in the scriptures, you too, brother. Yeah, we find in the scriptures that a trumpet was used to call a fast. A trumpet was used for a command to march. And a trumpet was used to call an alarm for war. We find that the word trumpet is used 104 times in the scriptures because God has a lot to say about his instructions. Can somebody say amen? amen. amen. Now the prophet Isaiah said, Isaiah 58 and 1, he said, cry aloud and spear not. He said, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Come on. How many knows when you come to church, you better get convicted in your sin. If you're not, we're not doing our job up here. We're not preaching the uncompromised word of God. But if you come to church and you feel bad about what you did and you feel uncomfortable, then we're doing something right. Because sin will send you to hell. The wages of sin is death. Come on. He said, cry aloud and spear not. Hallelujah. How many knows too many churches has got timid? Too many 
Three churches has lost its voice, lost its way. But all we got to do is preach the word. Somebody say, preach the word, pastor. Hallelujah. Now, I believe God is going to give us a platform. I believe God is going to give us a platform to sound the alarm once again to this lost and dying generation. First of all, to wake up from your sleep. The call of order is, is a sounding once again to get everybody ready to meet Jesus. It's time to get into formation. It's time to take our marching orders. It's time to get right or you're going to get left. It's time to come back to God. Somebody say, come back to God. God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The prophet Ezekiel, I preached on him five or six years ago. I fell in love with the prophet Ezekiel. You know he's buried right there in Baghdad. <laughs> they have this tomb. You can go on, you, on Google and search it and see a picture of his tomb. Ezekiel 33 and 4 says, Then whomsoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take it not warning. If the sword come, he take him away, and his blood shall be upon his own head. The prophet here saying, we're going to sound the trumpet, but you got to take heed to the trumpet. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Clarence, did you have a choice when that trumpet blew and you were in the military to stay sleeping? Come on. No Brother choice. Rich, did you have a choice? No choices. No choice. Did you have a choice, Brother Bob? No, sir. When they sound the alarm, it's time to get up. Guess what? You had to get up. If you didn't get up, they're going to throw you in jail somewhere. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. And how I many knows the church of the living God better start sounding the trumpet once again that Jesus is coming. It's time to get ready. It's time to get in formation. Come on. And it's time to make it. Come on. Yeah. Now is the time yourself. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this is very serious. That's why the prophet Ezekiel said what he said. If you don't take heed, then it's upon your own head. That's it. Yes, amen. Huh? I don't want your blood upon my hands. <laughs> praise God. I'm going to preach the uncompromised word of God and make sure that you understand fully that sin cannot be tolerated. Come on. And sin will send you to hell. It will separate you from God. Praise God. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. I, 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 wanna, I understand that no one wants to hear a trumpet blow when you're sleeping. Did that just run chills up your spine when they woke you up in the military? Huh? You're like, how could it be this early already, first of all? And I imagine it gave you chills from the top of your head to the soles of your feet every time they woke you up. I, I could imagine just one moment uh, that you would uh, man, just give me ten more minutes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sergeant, can I just have ten more minutes? No, when the call and God sounds the alarm, we have no more time. The time is up. We better start sounding the alarm and let everybody know that Jesus is coming. Somebody say amen. 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 Spent many years preaching at Clearwater Comprehensive Healthcare. Sam preached there with me many days for the Bible. Sister Sue preached there for three, four years. And I remember this one man, he would come to every service. They'd wheel him in in his wheelchair. And I preached there at the nurse home, just like I do here. I'm loud. I know I'm loud. I apologize. But there's only one way I know how to do it. There's only one way I know how to do it. Sound the alarm. But they brought this man, and he sat right up front. And as soon as the service would start, he would fall asleep. I don't know how it's possible. I'd get right in front of him preaching. Praise God! Yeah. <laughs> week in and week out, am I telling the truth, Sam? Absolutely. Every week in and week out, as soon as the service would start, it took him about five minutes and... <laughs> Unless you took him and shook him. Huh? Praise God. 
I mean, I would preach. I would preach harder when he would sleep. Just trying to make sure he heard. Huh? And when I would say, okay, God bless you, good night, he'd wake up. <laughs> I'm like, How is that possible? How is that possible? I'm screaming, preaching, cry aloud, spare not. And he would sleep all the way. I say, God bless you, we'll see you next week. And he'd wake up. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But one week I decided, you know what? I'm going to shake this thing. <laughs> I was, I, was, I was like, come on. Why would you want to come to church and sleep? And literally, I went up to him one service, and I said, hey, brother. And I thought he was coming out of that wheelchair. He's <laughs> like, whoa. What are you doing? Church over? Come on. Hallelujah. How many knows we've got to get somebody's attention, let them know that Jesus is coming, the, the trumpet is about to sound. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. He's coming back for those that are looking for him to return. He's not coming back for those that are asleep, those that don't know it. He's coming for those that are watching, those that are prepared. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Joel 2 and 1, he says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh and for it is nigh at hand. When I shook that man, he trembled. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah, we better do. Hallelujah. So, Brother Rodney, you better not be sleeping back there, my friend. <laughs> I don't know why I pick on you. You're on a couple of the tapes I talk about you over there. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says in the book of, of Revelation that John said, he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Revelation 1 and 10. Hallelujah. Here in the book of Numbers, God gave Moses the direction to make two trumpets. The trumpets were to be made of silver, uh, not of cast silver, but of beaten work. Uh, the manner and the shape was directed uh, by God for a purpose uh, that he intended. Uh, and God instructed uh, Moses to make two trumpets because there was two priests uh, that was going to use these trumpets to sound uh, their command of, uh, of alarm. Uh, the Bible says in Numbers 10 and 8, he says, uh, Only the priests, uh, Aaron and Aaron's descendants, are allowed to blow the trumpets. Uh, he said, This is is the permanent law for you to observe from generation to generation. How many knows that we got some priests around here that we're going to sound the alarm. We're going to blow the trumpet. We're going to sound the alarm loud. It's time to get ready. It's time to be ready with Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Brother Bob, I guess you got to go take trumpet lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'll practice every she'll, day. He'll, she'll, he'll practice at 5 a.m. every morning before work. <laughs> Praise God. Now, this signified that the Lord's ministers should lift up your voice like a trumpet. Now, there were several different occasions if you read all of chapter 10 here. When the trumpets were a sound, number one, for the calling of the assembly together. Number two, for the calling of the elders only to a meeting to signal a move, a call of war. They also blew the trumpets in time of gladness at the annual festivals. And they blew the trumpets over the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Can somebody say amen? They also blew the trumpet to remind you of God's covenant with man. Hallelujah. How I many of those guys got some promises for you and I? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, the trumpet blast, in no doubt, is startling to hear. Its clear note will penetrate the dullest ear. And it'll reach far off. And it forces everyone to listen. If you're sleeping and hearing, it's going to shock you. It's going to scare you. Now we find in the, in the book of Judges that, that God used trumpets to defeat the enemy of God. 
In the scripture, the trumpet blast uh, caused the host uh, of Midian to flee in dismay. Uh, when the blast of Gideon's trumpet burst uh, and startled their ears, uh, terror seized uh, them and made them an easy prey. Uh, the Bible says in Judges 7 and 20, uh, and there three companies blew trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hand uh, and the trumpets in their right hand to blow with all. And they cried, and the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Hallelujah. The Bible says when the Midianites heard the trumpet blast, they started yelling and running around in confusion. They turned on each side and on their swords. The trumpet blast confused the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Judges 6 and 34 says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. If we want to make a difference in this world, first of all, we need to be full of the Spirit and let God speak in our heart and then blow the trumpet. again. His word does not change. My God does not change. We are living in the last days. These perilous times are all around us. This thing is winding up. Come on, church. And our time is short. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. In the scripture, we see that a trumpet blast caused the massive walls of Jericho to fall down. God caused the walls of Jericho to fall after seven successful days of trumpet blowing. Now, come on, church. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me read it to you. Let's all turn there. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Beginning at verse number 4. Joshua 6 and 4. The Bible says, And seven priests shall bear the ark of seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with trumpets, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast. Everybody say a long blast. Long blast. With the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend upon every man straight before him. God had a plan when they blew that trumpet on the seventh day. God said, look here, I'm going to take it down. When you give me praise, when you begin to shout the victory, come on. How many knows that God has a word today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the scriptures we find that the trumpet blast will cause the dead in Christ to rise again. He will cause his church to meet in the middle of the air just with a trumpet blast. The scriptures say in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 6, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 says, In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. The trumpet blast. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm ready for Hallelujah. We find in the scriptures that the trumpet blast sounded when they proclaimed the advent of the festivals of God, especially Jubilee and the Feast of Tabernacles. In the scriptures, we find that the trumpet blast will precede the day of the Lord, Jesus said, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, one from, from heaven and to the other. Church, we have a lot to rejoice about. God is prepared to blow his trumpet. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Somebody say, it's getting close. Don't well, look at your arm like you got a watch. Nobody does that anymore. They have got one. I see a few watches. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 6 and 15, David and all of Israel were celebrating before God with all their might. How many has ever partied in the world? Rodney, put down your hand. <laughs> Praise God. We're going to have you sitting up here. Praise the Lord. How many has ever partied in the world with all your might? I can't say I have. Brother Jackson, have you part of your Praise the Lord. <laughs> but here the Bible says, David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, singing songs, and playing all kinds of musical instruments, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. Hallelujah. David said, praise him with the sound of of the trumpet. I believe a large trumpet blast is needed once again in our generation to wake up the church, to get the power of God back in the church. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How can we do that when we're a dead church? Come on. Huh? Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Hallelujah. I believe that God is about to do something great in these last days. And he wants to use you. He wants to use me. And I believe that trumpet is going to sound once again. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody stand to your feet here today. Do you hear the trumpet call?
God on us, Brother Bob, Brother Rick, Brother Jackson, if they'd all come and stand up front here. Praise God, if you have a need here this morning, uh, it's thick, it's real, the anointing is tangible. We got a bottle of anointing, we'll use the whole bottle if, it, uh, if that's what it takes. Uh, and if you have a need this morning, if you need Jesus in your life, no matter what you're going through, come up here this morning and let God touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Holy Spirit. 